Our third speaker is Ollie Mould, geographer, urbanist at Royal Holloway, lecturer in human geography there at the University of London. His um, academic research and writing focuses on the role of urban creativity, activism, and politics. His book, Urban Subversion and the Creative City, tries to demonstrate a different way of thinking about creativity than that which is offered by a neoliberal city. Ollie. So last year, I, I found myself in a community garden uh, down the road from where I live. Uh, and on one particular sunny day, um, I excitedly hurried down to the garden to check on the peppers that I had planted there. And when I arrived, I saw a neighbour there, a neighbour Claire. She's a retired biology professor, and she was cutting up one of my peppers. And I said, what are you doing, Claire? What are you doing? They're mine. And she kind of looked at me like this, and she went, yours? She said, they're not yours. They belong to everybody here. And I didn't really have a very good reply. Now, urban community gardens, right, they're growing in popularity. There's an estimated 250 in London alone, the one we've heard about, probably one of them. They promote healthy lifestyles, they foster community engagement, but more importantly, they point to a more sustainable way of life. Now, most of them are on public land, not all of them, but most of them are. They're democratically managed, and they're open to everyone. And they're part of what geographers, and indeed Jane Jacobs, called the urban commons, right? So they renounce private property quite deliberately, and they foster a sustainable balance between human and non-human life that we just don't see in other forms of urban sort of industrial agriculture or just kind of land, urban land use more broadly. But barely a few miles away from the garden that I frequent lie at least three golf courses. And each of them on their own is at least 100 times the size of the garden. And as you expect, they're private and they're exclusive spaces. In Greater London, there are 131 golf courses covering over 11,000 acres. Britain is home to a quarter of all of Europe's golf courses and with one in 20 found in London. And of the capital only makes up 0.65 percent of the UK's total land area. So there is a massive imbalance here. Now, the debate about the sustainability of golf courses is quite heated. Uh, many reports actually extol the benefits to physical and mental health of their users, which is fair enough. Um, but a lot of them point to the biodiversity. They increase the biodiversity of the area, which is actually a fairly dubious claim when you look into the, de uh, the, the data. But there is also a huge amount of research into their dire environmental record. Yes, they're trying to change, but they still use gargantuan amounts of water. They have high levels of pesticides which leach into the uh, water, and they affect local residents and the surrounding environment. And their construction is extremely unsustainable. More encouragingly, during the coronavirus lockdowns, when access to large open spaces was kind of a, a bit of a premium, some golf courses opened up to become public parks, and they're not turning back. And this, to me, makes perfect sense. Um, Regent's Park is 166 hectares. If that was to become a golf course, it could be used by only 314 people a day. Currently, the park receives around 35,000 people a day. So for me, golf courses are emblematic of a luxurious use of urban land that the planet, and indeed the rapid urbanization that is happening right across its surface, can no longer sustain. They are the very antithesis of the community garden ethos that treats land and the communities that they foster as a precious resource held together in common. So golf courses and gardens, they represent two poles of how and to what ends we can relate to urban land and nature. Golf courses misuse and consume precious urban land for the few, while gardens nurture a community resource for the many. Given the climate emergency that we find ourselves in, fiddling at the edges of our current social system will just no longer cut it. And as Greta Thunberg and many others have said, we need system change, not climate change. Now, such a radical shift is not only, it's, it's kind of not politically palpable, but it's entirely possible. It is no more difficult than turning the 18th hole of every single golf course into a community garden. We just need to realize why it's so vital to do it before it's too late. And I will leave the last words to my neighbour Claire. She said this, she said, Ollie, that seed that, you, that grew your pepper came from a pepper that wasn't yours before it, and it will seed a hundred more that aren't yours after it. None of them would have been bought, none of them would have been sold, and they've only been nurtured. That's the beauty of gardening like this, Ollie. It contains the answers to all the world's problems. We just need to know where to look. Thank you. Wow, thank you. So, Ollie, I actually... I 
Fascinating, and some of the figures really interesting. But what is the actual proposal? Just the 18th hole of each golf course turned into community garden? Uh, yes. No, I th it, it, it's, more, it's more of a sort of interjection. I think that we need to, but to shift the balance. It's not, I mean, as a policy, yes, obviously, if I was running for sort of some sort of elected official, yes, turn 18th, uh, every 18th hole. But it's more about understanding that the land is misused, is misused. And I think that we just need to make sure that there is balance brought back into the land use of cities. That's one way. There are plenty others. I mean, just to be honest, I don't see many golf courses in the cities. I really do see them outside. You know, I go to my yes. old place around Leatherhead. You know, there are multiple golf courses yes. within driving distance of everybody. But are, are there really golf courses in London, actually? Yes, I mean, there I... are golf courses all around the city. I mean, it depends where you draw the line of the city. Uh, but obviously... But the city is to be found in the suburbs, right? We are, cities right. are sprawling, right. land is at its most valuable, and actually most used in the fringes, in the suburbs. The okay. city the around here is not used as much as the suburbs, so that's where it's at its most acute. Okay. Ollie, thank you very much, and we've learned something, which is we have a quarter, a quarter, of, all the, um, quarter of all the golf courses in Europe.